Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul from Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we are going to talk about starting your Stormcast Eternals army. So, let's look at the basics real quick. It's one of the largest model lines that uh, Age of Sigmar has, and because of that, it really can be overwhelming for a lot of new players, which is why I really wanted to do this video to help out the new players that were going to just get lost in this sea of units. Um, many of the units fill similar roles on the battlefield. And depending on points and, uh, you know, future updates to War Scrolls and all of those sorts of things, or battalions even, um, you are going to get different value out of different units at different times. So right now, uh, I'm really talking about the units and points as they currently are. Um, in particular, we have a huge selection of heroes to choose from in Stormcast Eternals. The battalions are somewhat weak in the book, and so that doesn't give you a lot of guidance as far as what units you should be taking. You get a little bit of guidance from the storm hosts. It can kind of inform what units uh, you'll be taking, particularly if you are going to try and use certain named heroes. Uh, then you need to use Hammers of Sigmar in order to actually use their abilities. And the Anvils of Heldenhammer are also uh, very strong if you're going to go with a shooting heavy list. So that is you know, some kind of loose guidance that you get from the Storm Hosts. Overall, it's an elite army, and it is a toolbox army. But because it's elite, you can't get all of those tools into one list. You sort of have to pick and choose your tools. The tools are available for list building. They're not there in each and every list. So you have to pick and choose your tools. So let's get started looking at the units. First, we're gonna take a look at battle line. These are your must haves, must includes in match play. And uh, a lot of your army is typically gonna be made up of these. Your old standby are the Liberators at 90 points for five of them. They're currently really cheap. They're not super effective on offense or defense, but they're solid, cheap bodies. And they fulfill that battle line requirement for the least points possible. So if you're going to be leaning heavily on units that are not battle line, they could be a really good choice to free up space in your list. Judicators are some fairly average shooting units that can be battle line for you. They do offer a little bit of pressure that they can put on the opponent. They're uh, not a unit that you would necessarily take if they weren't battle line, I think, but they are halfway decent for what they are. Uh, Vanguard Hunters are battle line if your Lord Aquilor is your general. Now, these guys are interesting because they have a short-range shooting attack, and they have a similar melee profile to Liberators. They also have the ability to come in, uh, you know, deploy off the board, and on the first movement phase, come in within, uh, within six inches of the board edge and seven inches away from an enemy. And... Um, then that's their move for the mo the first movement phase. That um, allows them to take their shots at a unit, and th that 7 inches is less than the typical 9 inches you get from that type of special setup. So they're more likely to be able to get the charge off, and at very least they're in range for their shooting attacks. Now your last one here is your sequiturs that are battle line if you have a Lord Arcanum as the general. Now, important thing to note here is that it is keyword Lord Arcanum. So, 
this can be any of the various Lord Arcanums that we have available to us. There's a decent number of them. Um, so Sequiturs do have uh, some special abilities that can make them either really strong on defense or really strong on offense, and you can flip that around from turn to turn. So that can be a really effective unit. Um, this is a really common choice for Battle Line because they are a good unit on top of filling the requirement. All right. Now, heroes are something I think is really important to talk about because there's so many heroes in the Stormcast Eternal line. And not a lot of them are really worth taking, particularly for newer players. So I'm going to run through some of my top picks for heroes for newer players to be looking at and see um, how to start constructing your army and then some other things you might want to pick up somewhere along the lines. Um, Lord Aquilor is an excellent general in particular because he makes your vanguard hunters battle line um he also has a command ability that lets you pick up and move nearby vanguard chamber units so that's your hunters and your raptors that's a pretty important ability can create a lot of uh mobility in your army and the lord aquilor himself is extremely mobile now, my pick for a Lord Arcanum is the Lord Arcanum on Griff Charger. Um, he's a little bit weaker in combat than some of the other options, uh, and a little bit more expensive than some of the other options. He's sort of a middle-of-the-road sort of pick. Um, but because he's on a Griff Charger, he is extremely mobile. Um, and not only is he enabling sequiturs as your battle line, he's also a wizard, which is really important. And he gives you the ability, because he's so mobile, to get that spell in uh, wherever you happen to need it. Uh, the Lord Castellan is a very common piece that we see in a lot of Stormcast Eternals armies. They're very cheap at 100 points right now. And they can just hand out a plus one to save buff onto a nearby unit. Um, at no cost. that It doesn't take a command point. It doesn't take uh, rolling any dice of any type. Uh, there's no resource it takes up. It's just a free ability to give somebody plus one to save. So he is really strong, and he pairs particularly well with uh, certain units like Sequiturs, for example. He can move them from a four up save to a three up save and when they have their defensive buff on they re-roll their saves so three up re-rolling save is very hard to beat through uh your lord relictor is um a cheap priest option so that you get access to the prayers in the book um he's pretty flexible as well his prayers on his war scroll are pretty strong he doesn't really do much other than um you know do his prayers but uh that's certainly quite enough he's definitely really solid on his own now the next pick i've got here is the celestant prime and you'll notice that he is a little bit different than a lot of the other heroes in the list so what he is really giving you is a strong offensive hero. He is a little bit more like a monster in how he actually operates on the table. He doesn't really synergize with anything else. His role is to sit off the table for a little while and come in somewhere in the mid game to really beat on your opponent pretty heavily. Uh, your Knight in Cantor is a nice cheap wizard, and he has a once per game ability to automatically unbind an enemy spell that's being cast. So he's a really great option if you're looking for just a wizard in your list. Um, I know I actually have uh, one of him for uh, my Stormcast, or not my Stormcast, my Cities of Sigmar army. Um, 
because uh, Stormcast can be included as one in four units. So I like to take him along with the Everblaze Comet, and that can be a really potent combo. We'll talk about the Everblaze Comet in a minute. Knight Azeros uh, is a nice quick unit. Um, he is fairly durable for a hero, um, and he hands out reroll ones to hit, and it's both for shooting and for melee. So he can sort of run interference, get in the way. He has a lot of different roles that he can play, uh, and he is enhancing the hitting power of other units. Now, it's important to note that it is uh, other units that are within 10 inches of him that uh, you have the buff against not having friendly units near him. So you need to sort of get him into the thick of battle and be near your opponent's stuff to get uh, his benefits. My last one here is Gavriel Sherhart. Now he is the only, uh, well, not the only named character on the list. We also have the Celestine Prime. But he is um, a, he is bound to Hammers of Sigmar. And he has a really strong command ability that... Uh, gives you plus three to charge and it's also a stackable command ability so if you have extra command points you can take that to plus six or plus nine to charge it he really combos well with a lot of uh, other units using the allegiance ability of the stormcast eternals to be able to deploy off board and then lightning strike down onto the board anywhere nine inches away from the enemy he lets you guarantee that charge uh, with a big uh, hammer unit that can get in your opponent's way and do a lot of damage. So he is really strong overall. You can really sort of build a list around uh, his trick dropping down out of the sky. So for other units, uh, right now, uh, evocators are probably your best offensive melee unit um, they are very strong evocators on dracolines also very strong but they are uh, faster on the battlefield they move 12 inches so those are also a strong option vanguard raptors are going to be your probably your best shooting option either in uh, their form with long strikes or with their hurricane crossbows either one of those are really good for different reasons uh these are best in anvils of held and hammer uh because that uh storm host lets you spend a command point to shoot in the hero phase so you get an extra round of shooting so you can take a big block of raptors and have them shoot twice in one turn and that is really strong Castigators are another uh, solid choice that we do see sometimes, um, and they're very point efficient on shooting. They are uh, comparable in cost to Judicators, but you get more out of your shooting than you do with Judicators. Um, they're a little bit shorter range um, at 18 inches, but they're still uh, very potent, very effective, we definitely see those in some lists built around Anvils of Held and Hammer as well, getting uh, the double shooting out of them. So some other notes for you. Um, the Star Drake is a cool addition to add later on. Um, a lot of people do like running the Star Drake in lists. It's a very common thing to see in Stormcast Eternals armies. I don't rec necessarily recommend it for like starting out new players. Um, it's a challenge to paint it, um, and it's an expensive model. So it's not necessarily something, if you're a new player, that you want to commit to right away. Um, and the Stormcast Eternals do have their own kit of endless spells. And among those, the Everblaze Comet is a really strong choice. It is a long-range uh, damage-dealing spell. So uh, it's very good deals a lot of damage to your opponent at a very long range i believe it's set up as 36 inches from the caster so it is super strong definitely worth picking that up 
overall, I would say you want a season to taste with this army. Um, a lot of the units are good or good enough, and you sort of have to pick up what you like and play around with the things that you like. Um, the things that I've put in here, these are mostly your stronger competitive options. Um, it doesn't mean that anything else is necessarily bad. It's just uh, things in similar roles tend to be weaker right now or less points efficient. That could certainly change in the future fairly easily. Um, Stormcast are an army that doesn't really... Uh, it doesn't hang around at the top tables at tournaments a lot, but what it's great for is being a solid force that you're going to win as much as you lose uh, if you put together a decent list and a decent um, collection. There's a lot of different builds you can put together that can hang with, you know, pretty much the majority of armies that are out there. So... It's a lot of this is up to your own preference, and the things that I'm uh, including here are really just suggestions from a more competitive perspective, and from the perspective of what you should be picking up as a new player, uh, as opposed to uh, what you might want to develop down the line into a specific army that is tailored more to what you're interested in. And it certainly also doesn't mean that the rule of cool does not apply. Um, you know, I definitely encourage people to pick up models that they think are cool um, some of them are going to be uh, less uh, points efficient than other choices might be but overall these are uh, strong choices um, pretty much everything in this line is half decent so that's about all I've got for you right now if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more. Hit the notification bell so you always get the alerts when we have our new videos posted up. And don't forget to stop by our Patreon if you'd like to help out the channel further. And that is all for today, guys. I'll talk to you all later.